Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Pastiche of Skin. We've actually been started. We've already been watching this for uh, last night, and I could just not keep my eyes open while I was watching. I was just, I've been, I was traveling a lot, had a long weekend. I thought, right, hit pause, come back, retry this, and we'll actually just continue on as the same part of the video. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Let's jump right back into the Xbox X Games comms video because uh, there's more trailers for us to check out. Uh, there's, but we've already seen two out of the seven trailers that they were going to be showing in this. Uh, one of them being the Jurassic Park, their one being. Oh god, what was the other? Oh yes, the uh, the cinematic trailer for Assassin's Creed. And lots of great stuff for 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 PC gamers coming up as well. Absolutely. Did I miss anything? I think Halo enough Wars of us. Too. Let's see some more games. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, more games. New markets as well. Why not? Thank you so much. Uh, really can't wait to all the games. Well. Tell us all about the games. We want to know more about the games. The games are what we came here for. Forza Motorsport 7, my favorite. Let's take a look at the danger and the beauty of competitive racing at the limit. All right. So this is on our horizon. Or not. <laughs> I'm just curious to know which one it is. Come on, tell me! Tell me! Yeah, it is. I was wondering there because I, have we not seen this trailer before? I'm pretty sure I saw it. I've already seen this. Just the whole walk up to the chair, or walk up, not to the chair, to the uh, car. What car? Chair? What the hell am I thinking of? The walk up to the car is actually familiar. From every era, from every car, race each other on racetracks. Which, guy, which game is this? Is it Forza? Or is this something else entirely? It's shouty, shouty, shouty. So like, driving games are at the point where uh, you could get it could be mistaken for being indistinguishable whenever it's actually shot from wider angles and stuff of um, not being able to tell that it's a video game at all. Yeah, Forza Motorsport Seven. Is that not, so for some reason, in my head I was like thinking Horizon. It's not. This doesn't look like Horizon, but it's the Motorsport. It's the main series, so it's all race tracks and stuff. Um. Yeah, the Forza series has actually been good. It's always been good. I mean, I enjoyed Horizon quite a bit whenever I was playing it on the 360, I think. Was it the 360 I actually was playing it on, or did I play it on a friend's one? Either way, um, Forza series... They, is it just me, or is this a Forza series? They were born out of uh, Metropolis Street Racer and Project Gotham Racing. Is that the Forza series kind of branched off from those, as far as I can remember? You know what they say, like sometimes like certain racing games are based off of like the older generations of the series and the same developers kind of went from one to the other. Um, it, definitely the case with the Forza series, it feels like that's where its roots lie. And uh, I love Metropolis Street Racer on the Dreamcast. It was, it was, uh, it, the, the kudos and stuff in it was actually pretty awesome. The, uh, as a racing game, it blew the, it blew the bloody doors off as an arcade racer. And Forza has always kind of felt more arcadey than uh, more focused than focused on re reality like uh, the Gran Turismo series is actually based on I'm gonna turn these guys down we tiny touch because I don't know what they're actually saying that's of importance other than yeah got 4k a lot of it's all gonna do well game looks a great driving experience I'm sure Oh, uh, it, with driving games, it's uh, I can a really enjoyable competitive thing with friends, but I don't know about the international rankings where you know, if you're going to drive, you might want to just get into a car instead. But you can say that about absolutely any video game, I suppose. I've got a feed line being said into my earpiece, so we need to actually make sure to mention this thing about actually a, a quirky event that happened during the development of this game. Uh, they've done some crazy things. Uh, when we went out to go capture the uh, the 911 GT2 RS, mm -hmm. uh, the the first one that came off the line, uh, Porsche actually took down to South Africa because they were going to do all their marketing materials. They were going to capture it all there. Yeah. We sent our team down there. That was the first time we got to see it. And as we're they're out there taking pictures, all of a sudden the Porsche representative just starts covering the cars. He's like, nope. 
and out in the distance we could see these drones flying in because yeah. oh. people had heard Porsche was there and they wanted to get there. Oh, well, that's actually kind of funny. 45 minutes for the batteries to die, for these drones to fall, pull it off again, and then they were able to capture the car. Wow, yeah. that's... I'm glad <laughs> the drone batteries that don't go to. Well, I mean, that would have been a bit... Oh, that, do, what, do you know what that would have done? That would have completely ruined the massive reveal they were going to do at um, E3, where they actually, like, unveiled a car as part of their broadcast. Which was uh, super interesting, I think, maybe to a small percentage of the viewership. I mean, uh, car nuts, people who are actually like really into their cars, probably knew more about that car before it actually was going to be shown on stage. Like, uh, like, the, obviously, there are people who send drones out to try and get footage of it. And they're like, oh, cool, we're going to get to see it. Well, okay, well, it's something to do with a video game. Can I, yeah, can I get an answer? And those people are actually going to be playing all the driving games. They're going to probably be massively into Forza, massively into GT, massively into any of the games that are actually going to be showing them their favorite cars. Over time, we've been able to lower our, our min spec to an i5-750. Okay. Uh, in fact, at the office, I play it on a, a Surface Pro 4. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, not only that, a recommended spec is... Uh, well, that's actually kind of good. You know, you essentially chat about mid-range specs. I've always, I've always looked at the Surface Pro as being an awesome you know, device for... Replace, like, I'm like, essentially to replace this and replace a lot of stuff in here. If I just get a Surface Pro, I'd be able to be so much more portable with it. But as a gaming device, I've never really thought about it as a viable choice. But obviously, saying a mid range PC or a Surface Pro 4 would actually play Forza, the new Forza game reasonably well. Or pedal sets you have. Yes. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, they got pit now. Do you they know, come it, with like furry? Yeah, like, right. Really decorated, dice. ornate. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and they can mix and match them. Yeah. Uh, when we started to build it, you know, we the entire team got so excited. We brought in all these USB uh, peripherals that we could find, from flight sticks to fight sticks. Uh, I've even raced Forza Seven on a Guitar Hero guitar, what? a drum what? set, and a what? dance pad. Yeah. Uh, Why are they not? By button in mechanics like that, they are encouraging people to do that kind of shit on stream, which is fair enough. Like uh, that's goofy as hell, but. You, all you need is Donkey Konga drums, man. You just need a left, you need a right, and you need this for the break. <laughs> you can just plug it in and play. Uh, and after the stream today, people can go check out uh, Xbox Wire and they can see our, our officially uh, our full list of official peripherals and they can see our PC spec. All right, fantastic. Remind us when Forza Motorsport 7 is going to be available, Bill. Uh, the Deluxe and Standard Edition will come out October 1st. Uh, and then for Ultimate Editions players, they actually get to play it four days early on September 29th. So they can feel superior right? to everyone else. Early beta access for those people. I mean, of early beta access, uh, there is one coming up fairly soon. Uh, I think it's Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, World War Two. Uh, people have been asking me in comments of other videos. I'm just I'm talking about it here because there's, so this is just pre preamble. That uh, can you do you do the same trick that we did with Destiny with that? And I'm hopefully seeing if you can. I should actually you get details about it by about next Tuesday because or well by the end of this week because it'll be the twenty fifth or so. This week we'll be able to get hands on and see for themselves how beautiful it is. Spoiler alert: It looks. Right, what? Oh no, this is actually. I thought they were chatting about like something they were going to be showing people playing live, but no, it's actually just what you can see at Gamescom. Of course, there's lots more exciting announcements coming up on the show, including Shadow of War, Sea of Thieves, and we've got something very special for all you Minecraft fans. And don't forget, we've got that big pre order announcement coming soon, so stay tuned. This really isn't that big of a show. Not really that exciting. Um, I, I'm, I can see why I was passing out last night. Um, I'm just trying to vamp over the top of this while they're actually just, it's more advertising material, more advertising material, more advertising material. Which is the whole point of this thing, but I mean, give us something innovative and new would be nice, but E3 was the big one. Uh, Gamescom, obviously, Sony had completely uh, stepped out of Gamescom and just went like, uh, Paris Game Show and... Our own Sony experience thing, that's what we're going to be dealing with. That's that's our next big announcement. Oh, fair enough, that's actually grand. I mean, why spend the effort whenever you don't really need to? Meanwhile, Xbox really have to push their 1X because that's their... Uh, they, they, they need to get those SKUs at the door. Oh my god, it's almost real! This is the same as the this is the E3 one from before, so we're rewatching it. Like that's the only thing I, I get annoyed about is actually having not having to, but actually sitting down and rewatching um, previously created materials whenever I'm doing these conferences. But obviously, like, the, put so much effort into this, but the new remix is on, man. Let's uh, let's see a shorter version of it, even. Oh, so exciting! Look at the world growing around them. It's so unreal, it's real. 
you'll literally be blown away by the pixels. Like Shadow War is actually obviously not looking as attractive to a lot of people now because of the microtransactions that are going into the game. I, I mean, I, I was never going. I never. I wasn't pre-ordering it in any way, shape, or form. I was going to wait and pick it up, which um, I, I, I think I've completely moved on from hype culture for games and we'll pick them up at a later date which is very unhelpful to me is actually doing videos for you guys as fast as possible to make sure you get to see stuff uh but at the same time don't let any hype ever drag you into something too early whenever you probably end up reading. nothing nothing hype can do nothing but disappoint and you never you never be hyped and then get oh it's as awesome as i think it is or better really uh, well, I get no goosebumps from watching that. From Xbox platform engineer Mike, thank you for coming on the show, and what a year for Xbox so far! Oh, it is a fabulous year for Xbox, isn't it? We've sold, we've sold some of them. Ah, we didn't even think we could. We told you about a new one that was coming, and people still bought the old one. Ah! We'll be able to play it at Gamescom this week. How important is that for you? Yeah, I mean it's a huge milestone for us. In fact, the first time people uh, in Europe will be able to play Xbox One X here uh, at Gamescom. Mm. Just checking messages here. Xbox One S, Windows 10 PCs, and Xbox One X will have over 170 stations for people to play the best versions of the games. So we're, we're really excited. Wicked. Now, a, a question that's been on my mind and people are asking me as well. If, if I've already got an Xbox One or an Xbox One S and I'm adding an Xbox One X to the family, how easy are we making that transition to the new console? Yeah, a lot of the people. <sighs> the, uh, for people. And so there's the one thing that actually would annoy, it has annoyed a few people is actually like the transposing of hard drives from the PlayStation to a new PlayStation if you happen to buy another device. The uh, biggest problem that I actually had was with the. Oh, yeah, it's ready for one. You can back it all up. Uh, was that I whopped out my hard drive before checking the details for it and I lost PT and a bunch of other stuff that was actually like just on my hard drive because I could read down load absolutely everything whenever put in the two terabyte hard drive but by losing a couple of those things like PT it was like it, 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 it didn't it didn't piss me off it was like I accepted it was going to have to happen if I did it wrong but by creating a quick and easy transfer from one to the other same way we do with most of our phones where everything's cloud based and we actually have um, most of our contracts all saved, so the only thing that you're really pulling down is actually individual data from some particular places, like text messages or whatever else. So we get we all move on so quickly from technology that we need to have these simple backup systems that they're going to put in for the Xbox One whenever people are coming from their one to the S to the X or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean it's in preview right now. This is an update across the entire Xbox family of devices, uh, and we're really happy. We're Xbox family. <sighs> Remember when consoles were just a generation? We only had one kid every family. Like that really weird cousin that was portable every once in a while. I think Sega was the one who actually really went with the family. Although it was because they all plugged into each other, it was more incest, which is terrifying and weird. All the socials, socials, the socials, notifications, and socials. Make sure people know. That's weirdly ironic that uh, I actually, my PSN is reasonably public and nobody actually goes to the bother of adding it. <laughs> I'm like, ah, sweet. I actually don't have, I don't have to deal with like friend requests constantly. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike it. It's actually, I, I play so little stuff online multiplayer that, uh, well, you'd be very unlikely to actually get me to join your game, but. Uh, so UI is going to be about personalization. Move pins, move objects, place things in different places. Uh, which is a big, a big element. And all new community tab. And so the activity feed that you have. It does feel like comment on what's going on. Not cluttered, but it does feel oddly. Like dissociated each each of things one after the other. I guess actually you have a page for a person, which is oh, that's actually pretty cool. I like that over the way Sony does theirs because uh, that single stream of what's new pulling along and not really being able to pull more information whenever you go into a person's profile. Just by the way, it's actually laid out. You don't have these kind of like full screen blades that actually work from. 
uh, something I, I really like. It's very inviting. It's, it's very retro. It looks like the 360s goddamn UI for like the 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 slidey parts that came into it. Like a white and green. That was white and green was the Xbox 360 kind of like moniker colors. So they've gone back to black. Back in black. announcement that we're publishing the console version of that game uh i've been known to stream that a little bit i'll be here at gamescom all week live streaming off mixer creative right uh, the game calm continues to actually be slow talking on the couch stuff so uh, uh i thought maybe the i knew like they said it was gonna be seven premiere trailers of any sort that that would actually be the stuff that they would actually be excited to be talking about, I honestly thought that would actually be uh, hook up some preparations for this, but the, the long, long talking conversations about UI upgrades, this is just a state of the nation kind of thing. Woo! Right, so State of Decay 2. Zombie fun times. Um, I've got a feeling that State of Decay is maybe, maybe getting it. It, it, it was the first. The, whenever the first one came out, it had a lot of its flaws, and people loved it despite its flaws. Meanwhile, this one's not going to have that benefit of the doubt, and is kind of walking into a much more populated world. Is that all they're showing for State of Decay Two? Wow! It's like you go so far from the E3 trailer, which was way, way too long and way too low paced, to that little glimpse, and then of course we're going to slow everything back down again with another little chat. I'm sorry, guys. I was I I'm fully rested. I have slept, and I'm still. I'm finding it difficult to work my way through this. Uh, right, screw it. I'm probably going to disappoint a lot of people by doing this, but I'm just going to actually... I'm just going to actually skip ahead. I'm going to skip ahead and see what actually... Is there anything new that they've got to show in it? Alright, so essentially increasing the quality of their game for survivability and individualization of the people that are in their game. Okay. All story. Is it? One of the things I loved about State of the Cave that also caused me a lot of pain as well was permadeath. Are you bringing that back? Yeah. It's core to the experience, absolutely. You know, there is no sense of threat. There is no sense of uh, consequences for your actions if there's not death in the game. It's, it's part of right, so death of your character, death of uh, that person, then you know, you literally, uh, I'm assuming if it's random gen generation that you literally don't get to choose your race and character or whatever else, that'd actually be, it'd be funner. It is one of the things you want, like, right, you have to live a slightly different experience. Um, I would actually, it would encourage me to die in a game if I wanted to actually see someone from another perspective. Yeah, this whole bit with the big creepy dude. Right, so have we got much more to be watching on this? Uh, I'm, I, I feel bad for skipping through this. Like, I stopped watching it yesterday. I just couldn't. I was too tired. So I'm watching this from the, the re-regard, like the actual playback. So... Pfft. What's this? Is this World of Tanks? Yep. Is there anything to be told to us about War of the Tanks? I already got a feeling that I'm actually going to just literally skip straight through to the end of this. Uh, World of Tanks up in 4K! Get 4K up in this bitch! 4K tanks! 4K Normandy! 4K beaches! 4K dirt holes! 4K Paris! 4K everywhere! 4K it. 4K oh, out of nowhere! Xbox Arena tournament play. Uh, are we talking about? Aye. Uh, is this people talking about World of Tanks now? Oh, what's this? Xbox Design Lab. Ah, that's right. This is the design your own personal controllers. And we're very proud to announce today that the service is expanding to over 20 additional European countries. Yes! 
Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, and Sweden. Not to include the UK, as it will soon be leaving Europe. <laughs> I got. It looks good. It's everybody has their design controller. That's like, one of the things that we actually all have about our controllers. Like I want to know which ones mine. You scrape your name into it back in the day. It was, but now you actually truly can have your machine. Your like, to have it customized uh, the way that you want it, and also to have to have, have worn it in the way you wanted it. Because like everybody's thumbs work differently on thumbpads. I have friends of mine who have actually like worn grooves in by the, by the fact that they use that part of their thumb rather than actually the tip. And I was like. I, okay, but that's the way you play, no problem at all. I've, I've destroyed the thumb tips on these a couple of times, and in fact, this one needs to be replaced. But, um, yeah, not... Oh, God, look at those faces. Ah. This... Yeah, there's actually looking at the details of what you can do with it. Yeah, rubber, and then all ones seemed on different games, different bins, so you can change. You can change the D-pads, you can use the, change the thumbsticks. This isn't new news, it's been around for a while. Congratulations are in order for what? Are oh, you going to eat those donuts for someone? Right. All right. Right. So fourth year, year anniversary for something. I don't know. Is this guy actually? Uh, they, that's the thing. I'm not watching these to actually see who it is anymore. Um, as much as I think developers are really important to actually come out and talk about their games, um, and people who actually help promote them, the this does always feel like this is for shareholders. This isn't for people who are playing the games. It really does feel like it sometimes. Uh, Raiders of Broken Planet. I think I was hammering through that. I was like, yeah, Raiders of Broken Planet? Is that the game I've been playing a bit of? Is this the... Alright, World Premiere. I knew it was coming. So right now, let's take a look at some of those awesome ID at Xbox games coming first to Xbox from the ID at Xbox... Oh, right. And so, uh, Xbox Inside. So I actually like this is going to be the... Um, the, uh, the, the cool indie stuff that's actually being made. So what we got? Can you show me what you got? Show me what you got. Show me what you got. So Hello Neighbors coming to Xbox. Um, Path of Exile. Yes. It's Raiders of a Broken Planet. Yeah, I've been playing. If you check out, I've been playing. I played a bit of the beta of that. Uh, three video up of it. Good Fortune, which is the... Uh, yeah, battle right. So we've got another Battleborn style game, Street Brigade, the um, battling waves of enemies, Black Desert Online MMORPG. Wait, are these all considered ID at? So are these the indie developers on Xbox? Because these aren't indie games. <laughs> a lot of these are games that have been around for a while that are actually getting ported. Right. What do you think they call Black Desert an indie developer? Or the people behind Raiders of a Broken Planet and stuff? Like, that's that's not. That's that, 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 that's a bit scaly to say. To actually, like, whenever I say scaly, not as actually they're big. I mean, as like a lizard person. Uh, of course, is the, um, the ship raiding and adventuring pirating game. The one that isn't the, uh, the Sea Devil Battle simulator from. Uh, what do you call it? Assassin's Creed. Now this looked interesting. Uh, it, that's an exploratory kind of world and adventure. I'm curious to see how it's going to scale up to actually have repeatable missions. But I imagine it's going to be like it's just you and your ship full of mates. It's not going to be 24 ships all con convene on a single instance at the same time because that'll just become a clusterfuck. Like that's going, to, like that's not going to work seventy percent of the time. Plus the amount of damage you did to yourself coming down. Unless you build a character specifically for. You said you have a cannon brawler. <laughs> and miss. Bye ship. So that was all the bits from the original. Set. That was from the E three CSEs demonstration. So that was actually a, that was a pretty smart uh, way to show it because we were familiar with most of the stuff that was there. 
there's a little hidden message in that, in that by having Xbox and PC yeah. on the show floor, we're announcing crossplay for the first time. Well, there you go. So, crossplay for the first time, uh, being announced, see if these, which, to be honest, at this point, we're all expecting for most of the consoles to actually take on, although Sony are still the ones, they're at this point, are kind of dragging their heels on it. Uh, to keep themselves out. So you're going like, we don't want. We, why, why, why would we want to open our doors to other people? Which is reasonably fine because uh, there, uh, any entryway of any sort would probably lead to some form of exploit, and Sony will get screwed over again. But um, yeah, I, I would love to see full crossplay of games. As it is now, it's really only separate. It's only available to people who are playing games that are PC based but have a port to console. Meanwhile, games that are console based and actually be spread across all of them would be really nice. Community that have been playing on Xbox or been playing on PC and they've kind of made friends in the forums and in the community but yeah. they've, they've yet to play together and so Aww. for the first time during Gamescom yeah. itself um, lovingly in a across like a fence <laughs> <laughs> very sweet was it, was it easy to do though? We flicked a switch. Yeah. Is that literally how easy? I don't, don't want to do, do too much injustice to our, uh, our services team because they work very hard. But then when it actually came to testing it, it just worked. And, and actually, that, that allowed us to really focus on the PC version. So yeah, we want to know more about we've that. We've come here thing. with um, 21 by 9 with an unlocked frame rate, and we've got mm -hmm. that on the show floor. But then we've also got 4K running at 60 frames a second because we knew that that was super important. We, we want to, in early 2018, we want to bring the the sort of PC game that players expect. Um, and we felt that one of those expectations is to be day and date, right? Yep. Is that we we don't want the game to be released after on PC. Like, we've come here to say th the cross-play... Right, so cross-play and they want to actually do it all at once. Together. Play. Same day. Everyone's together. More songs. The song <laughs> itself, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so say so I'm going to get together and get my little crew. Um, who should I be... What kind of characters, what kind of people should I be looking Ooh. for to make the best kind of pirate... <laughs> this is going to be speculation and discussion of... Uh, things that people are doing. So Sea of Thieves obviously is being played by a number of people, um, being on Xbox and not being on anything else. I will be playing it, uh, but yeah, you can obviously check it out with other people at some other point because they're playing a fair amount of it. What have we got to go through here otherwise? As the, oh, there we go. Let's jump ourselves onto the next one. First, We're going to get through this reasonably quick now. We've been teasing a little bit about, so let's take a look. World Premiere! When our developers introduced Redstone's right. Minecraft, we had no idea what it would unleash. You've built bigger, better, and smarter things than anything we imagined. In honor of your creativity, we've come up with an intricate design of our own. Dirt, grass, right. redstone, combined in a The Minecraft limited edition Xbox it. One. For the adventurers, the craft That'll be so be many kids happy dirt. because they want to have their this Minecraft cool. dirt blocks everywhere. Alright, so there you go. Uh, for anybody who actually has a kid that wants to be playing Minecraft on console, this is the one that looks most like a dirt block. But yeah, uh, essentially all it is, probably a larger hard drive space, and it's a new model, what ass. So, this is the first time I have this really great console in front of me, and I'm almost, yes, I, 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 I touch it. It's the Minecraft Xbox One S uh, limited edition bundle, and joining me today is... Alright, so anyway, the, you saw what it is, like literally, I was like, do we really care about... Uh, how it's going to be very important to actually be doing it. It's the first console with transport kissing. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Oh, and they have special little blocks that are potions that are actually like, so you do the designs on your controllers to actually match up with it if you want to have a potion one. So people who are really into Minecraft can have their special Minecraft controller. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. That's good. And people could have wanted it if they were on the Mixer channel. Great. Now on to another world premiere. Here. Right, I was wondering there because the sign, the sign was gone there. Shout out to the world premiere, so we're getting to see a bit more detail. She loved! To the earth. They are summoning death. <laughs> Seeing Balrogs and Shelobs and many things, oh my. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the single player campaign for this is going to be. Her. 
do you with it? You will. Can you bleed? What have we unleashed? What well, unleashed you? You unleashed Cora Brimmore, and he is actually on his warpath. Literally at this point, you have packs of enemies running with you. I'm liking this isn't just looking like uh, locations that are based around like uh, stronghold, stronghold, stronghold as well. You get into the pits, you get into the underworlds, man. Punch and burn all the things and keep on stealing all their souls. Nice. That's pretty cool. Of course, Shadow of the War in multiple editions on all the consoles, and of course, going to have to eat all of your money. Um, I absolutely adore Shadows of Mordor Game of the Year edition. Um, I highly recommend it. Other people check it out. Uh, it's, uh, you, you should go back and play that game now and enjoy it for a while, and maybe see what happens with the Shadow of War. Oh, of course, special Xbox One messes. Uh, go and actually check out the Shadow of War uh, after it's been out for a while. See if they calibrate themselves or if they've actually like really been offensive about what they've done with their loot boxes and anything else and uh, find out what the multiplayer is going to be like because like Phantom Pain which actually took a while to get its multiplayer out it of course was interesting for the people who got really into it but for everybody else it was just a pain in the ass so are you going to be buying a game just to be missing out on something that could be like like a good solid 30% of the content while the other 70% is a very very enjoyable single player campaign like, do you want that? Do you want to actually have a game where you're literally, you're, you're buying it where you don't care? Like, for me, it's a bit of more of a problem because I don't play multiplayer as much. But, um, to lose a percentage of the game that I bought, just because that's what that's for, and then know that they're never going to expand this bit, because this bit is making them a lot more money, that's, that's, uh, that's where the unbalance comes from me. No. No. You actually get Cuphead. So, Contra, they say Contra, Super Mario, and the art style of the 1930s. Special moment for a thrilling game! The likes of which has never been seen before! Well, we've shown it a few times. It's Cuphead! Yeah, um, obviously the art style of this has been gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. It's been exciting to watch the development of this, but it's been. It's taken so long. It's taken, so, <laughs> taken far too long. But um, I'll be excited to see it come out later on this year. Uh, I hope Cuphead does not remain exclusive to Xbox and PC, but I'll probably check it out at some point for my own self, my own enjoyment. I'm sorry, the, these yawns are going to be coming back in because this is not, this is, this is, it's not exactly thrilling me. The pace is off. So yeah, uh, you guys act cute on your couch, talk to the dev, uh, wrapping up development right now. Um, where you can run, duck, jump, shoot, parry. We also have other levels where you can play as a shmup. Yeah, so the run, jump, shoot, shoot, parry, and the shmuppy levels. So it really, it really plays more like a, it plays like a classic uh, game where you actually like you'd have a shmup level like on level four and level seven, and then work your way through the rest. Designs obviously look fantastic, uh, adorable. Uh, I'm finally saying like, I'm glad to see actually like combat in motion now rather than actually be watching a fucking trailer. So there are some levels where you do a play as a shmup. Yeah, that's, that great. messes with your, you know, when you're like, you can't quite understand. Oh, you have specials as well. There you go. Into like auto mode. Very yeah, active. it's like using the force, I always think. It's that zen it's, moment where you just shoot. It's too fast. You can't actually process it. It's just really weird. Right, so... It's you on that, you're on that zone. It's a, yeah, this plays like Contra. This is, this is a adorable, weird Contra. We talk about the process in creating the look of Cuphead, because it's, it's pretty unique. Yeah, so every single game, every single frame in the Christ, actually, to be honest, I feel like I'm actually watching that game Starry Nights that I've actually been playing re uh, on the PlayStation. Yeah, also, all the backgrounds are watercolor paintings, oh and goodness. there's nearly three hours of custom jazz music. Oh, nice. Jazz. Boom! <laughs> That's actually pretty impressive. Everything in this game, which is unusual for a video so the animation is gorgeous. It's well, it's well placed together, and it fits so well. Um, right. if I was, it, it takes the world of a bizarre Parodius kind of like monstrosities and makes it really enjoyable to play through. I imagine. Um, it, it was that surrealistic mm, approach to animating where there were no injuries. Yes, anything can be anything else yeah, as long as your hands can draw it. You know, rip 
off his tail and use it as a match to light something on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so it, that was the draw to basically making very wacky. <laughs> that's cool. Um, that yeah, like we've got Cuphead coming soon. That's a lot of cool gameplay footage. It's really glad, I'm really glad to see it in gameplay motion rather than actually through trailers. Yeah. This feels like it'll be a lot of fun to play through with friends. It reminds me of Metal Slug. It reminds me of so many games that we just hammered through as friends. I don't think it's going to be a particularly long game, but it'll be something that you'll come back and play a couple of times with your buddies. Um, much more likely to be playing through it in multiplayer, uh, couch, couch co-op than anything else. Sounds really friendly, but it sounds it's innocent, not, doesn't it? <laughs> not a New Game Plus finally tuned for Elite. Ah. You can actually switch between the different kind of uh, like difficulties for each. Uh, Bullet Hells co op mode it comes out September 29th. So that's the official, that's the big line. September 29th, that's when we're going to be seeing Cuphead hitting your shelves or hitting your online store where you can pull down a copy of it. So it unless you're going to go to the limited edition guys it's very unlikely that pro that'll probably get a physical release I'm just checking I'm just making sure <laughs> but first it's time for another world premiere gameplay trailer Woo! by joining this exciting mission to Mars you will be part of shaping the future of humanity. Okay. You'll get to travel to an inspiring and beautiful new world. You'll research and utilize state-of-the-art technology. This is this another base building game? Or another like civilization building game? Yeah, it kinda looks like it. Solar panels, biodomes, terraforming. Do you think that's what the next, the next games, like the next big game fad, is going to be? Let's get the fuck off this planet because we don't want to be here anymore. Hmm. Fucking giant the snake monster comes out like oh, people. Mars is really a very sick place. <laughs> Surviving Mars. Discover her secrets with minimal casualties. Right, so whole premise is survive. Like, <laughs> I want to imagine if there's actually like you build the city for a post-apocalyptic build where literally you just arrive in and everything's already fucked. You're like, oh well, but now they all they all live in like. Shitty air domes that have no glass windows or anything. There's, there's the only thing that'll survive the meteorites and the goddamn uh, rays that are coming through. Paradox's new game set on Mars. Now it's almost the end of the show, but we've got something really special to show you. All right, so yes, yeah, City Skylines Paradox's game. All right, so that's what it is. Like City Skylines is a fantastic Sims game. Introduce you to a very special new member of the Xbox family. World premiere. Huh? Oh, so pretty, oh, so pretty, oh, pretty and witty and bright. Two years ago, when we started on this journey, you told us you wanted power. Project Scorpio edition. <laughs> so it's a Scorpio badge, Scorpio name. Because Scorpio was actually a really good title for it. Come printed exterior with all the dots. Combination of all of your feedback and something that we think will truly move Xbox forward. Uh, is that, was that literally a model number? So yeah, like, all there is, all they're announcing really is that you can pre-order now the one that has Scorpio written on it because we realize that X-Bone X is not really that good. Xbox One X. X-Bone X. X Xbox One X Project Scorpio Edition. It does. It, it, it anything else to me? Like this is what I said back whenever we did the E3 broadcast. The X Bone X looks like a gamer tag from somebody from the mid '90s. that would have been chatting about how much they fucked your mom. World premiere. Take it away, Larry. Xbox Live's Major Nelson. I'm really excited to share this with you. This is the Xbox One X Project Scorpio Edition that we are announcing today, and will be available for pre-order today as well. Now. 
I have these special white gloves, which are going to allow me to dig in and do an unboxing. But I want to show you the box first because this. Are we literally watching an unboxing video by Microsoft for the pre-order? The oh man. See the Xbox screen for those. Notice the X on the front. Kind of looks like the original Xbox, doesn't it? Of course, earlier this year we announced original Xbox coming to. Yeah, see the box with the ship. It actually does look like the original Xbox because it's the same fucking size as one. So what do you say we jump into it? Let's take a look at what we have in the box. Of course, we have a uh, trial for Game Pass and Xbox Live Gold will be included. Uh, in this box over here, you'll find- 30 day trial. Already got attached. This box over here, we're gonna include the controller. Batteries are included. A high speed 4K capable HDMI cable. And then we have the console, but not just any console. This is the world's most powerful console. 4K gaming, six teraflops. This thing, as you know, is a beast yes yes it indeed is a beast um i th I, th I just can't there's not there I haven't been convinced by the xbox this entire generation but that doesn't look bad like seeing it in hands seeing its shape and size it reminds me a lot of the actual like the ps2 ironically enough just by the shape of it but um yeah if that's not taking up too much space, let's see. Like, what? Show us the power plug. Show us the power brick. Are we are we have internalized power components now, or do we still have a brick? Beautiful premium buttons. Now, I also want to point out that all your existing Xbox One controllers will work. I imagine they should. If they didn't, that'd be fucking offensive. Xbox One X Project Scorpio Edition. Isn't it beautiful? All right, let's uh, turn it around and take a look at the ports back here. Of course, if you have an Xbox One S, you'll already recognize the ports. They're in precisely the same way. Right. In, uh, two USB, Ethernet, and was that a phono? Plug it into the Xbox One X. We're going to make it easy to move all your content over, and you're going to be ready to go. What's really cool is we have some design touches. Well, seeing that's actually a two-pin. Yeah, sweet. So internalized power. Like, I imagine if it was anything other than a two-pin, I would think it would have been. That's cool. Straight in. Plug it into everything is exactly the same it's going to be very very familiar and that's a look at the xbox one X. that's smart just to have a little bump on the actual port to actually make sure you can tell which one's which in the project scorpio edition but here you get this beautiful graphic you get the xbox green and this exclusive stand eh. it is available for pre-order today so get your pre-order in because once it's gone this is going to be gone for good. My name is Larry Herb, Xbox Live's Major Nelson. Thanks for watching. Very nice of you, Major Nelson, to show us what you're trying to sell us. But yeah. Oh, God. The, the fake excitement there. Um, yep. The Project Scorpio. Uh, their original announcement for it. <laughs> what was the point? They literally have one sitting right there. What was like so exciting? Like, oh, we're going to bring one out right now. This is the one that this is the one that Major Nelson himself has touched. He took off the gloves. His fingers were inside it. Uh, so we're down to what the last four minutes of video here. Like, there's no. Is there one more thing? Is is there one more thing, guys? Nah, there isn't. So this has been the Xbox Live conference. Um, yes. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I've actually kind of hammered through that as fast as I could because I was getting unbelievably bored of the length of time I was actually spent watching it. Uh, this will be hopefully a lot shorter than most people think but uh, they'll have to suffer through the first hour of me almost falling asleep but uh yeah finally finally final thoughts xbox one x actually look at the actual device finally to see it in hands and seeing people's feet in front of people looks good it looks the right size it looks like a ps2 it really does look like a ps2 um i'm glad to see that all the power components and gubbins are actually on the inside so it's easy to pack away um we're getting to see a lot of the titles are going to be on both it and on other consoles but there's, of course, there are a few exclusives that are going to be good fun. The Xbox One X is, of course, a more powerful console. But that's, power doesn't mean everything whenever it comes down to actually, like, seals and whatever else. Do they have enough of the user base to actually really entice everybody in? Um, do we actually have all the friends list still going? I wouldn't mind coming back to Microsoft. It's, it's like, literally, it's just, I haven't had a reason to do so. So, if, um, for the console world, actually, be, Xbox One X could be my back in again. Uh, but I haven't found anything in particular that drags me to it. I want to thank you. Say thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, the Xbox Gamescom conference is done. We have other conferences to do for Gamescom. We don't have Sony, but I'm pretty sure there was an EA one. 
and there is the Xbox One, and I'll take a look to see what other ones are available, and if we get the chance to watch them live, we'll do them live here on stream, or we will actually do them as a vloggy video kind of things like this afterwards. So um, not massively impressed, it was just a chance to see the actual Xbox in hands, and um, yeah, uh, it's Microsoft, good luck to you. I, ho I, ho I really do hope that it actually does well for Microsoft, because com competition is important whenever it comes to consoles. We don't get the developments that we did in the 90s and all without having Sega and Nintendo at each other's throats. So Microsoft and Sony, it's on you guys to actually keep this competitive and keep trying to one-up each other because PC will always be standing there going like, <laughs> console peasants. And I'm like, I don't know. A lot of us actually just enjoy to sit back in the couch and just play the games with a control pad. And that's what I want to do. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.